Right now, though, we thought it might be the right time of year to take a little trip to sunny California. You know, out to the desert. Because most Canadians have endured a brutal winter, and we should all just kick back, relax, and watch the stars go by. It's no secret that California is a great place to be if you're looking for stars. But Gavin Heffernan is a stargazer of a different sort. I think the night sky is kind of a fantasy for a lot of people. What started as a passing hobby has become Gavin's obsession. I kind of got into time-lapse photography by accident, really. The first one I ever did was a shot of my turtles in the tank. He's shot everything from trees to traffic, even his robotic vacuum cleaner. But snapping the stars, that's his passion. I started to really fall in love with it. And you could see the universe in a whole different way. And to get that perfect shot, Gavin's got to go the distance. So today we're heading to Antelope Valley, which is about an hour and a half outside of Los Angeles, where the mid and the high deserts meet. Looking forward to exploring it for the first time. So we've found a spot that looks like it's going to be a good location. There's a lot of interesting foreground elements. Uh, we've got a lot of cool Joshua trees here. We're away from civilization, so there's not going to be too much light pollution to get in the way. We've got two tripods, two cameras, and some firewood just in case, but hopefully we won't need it. Got to watch out for rattlesnakes around here, too. <laughs> Before he sets up, Gavin searches for the stars. I'll walk around the location using this app called Sky Guide or my compass to locate the North Star. And from my earlier calculations, that is somewhere about in this direction right here. The Earth rotates a lot. You'll see an amazing amount of movement. So there is a fair amount of research, a fair amount of calculation. It took a while to get the technique just right. The first time I did it, I set the camera up and I pointed up at the sky and I thought I broke the camera. I didn't even, I was just stupidly not even thinking why, why is everything moving so much? And then I slapped myself in the face and realized that's just the earth rotating like it's been doing this whole time I've been alive. I'll usually try to get multiple cameras going at the same time so that we have total coverage. He's chasing the light. The sun's going down fast, and time is running out. You're sort of trying to focus and not panic, because every second, every second counts. I think it's going to just go a little bit higher here, and I'm almost done. It's really a beautiful spot here. You can see how these trees almost start to come to life now with the sun that's behind them. So I'm going to sit and take one picture every five, maybe every six seconds. So that way we'll get the trajectory without getting too many shots here. Try to aim for about 240 pictures, which I know will equal to a 10 second shot. The, one of the biggest challenges is wind, because if it, the camera moves like a millimeter, that can be a problem. So now I try not to touch it and carefully walk away. The sunrise and the sunset shots are really nice for the transitions, just to give you sort of a story. I don't usually decide in advance, I usually try to let the location show me what's there. If it's a night where half the night is in thunderstorms and then the other half becomes these incredibly clear stars, that's a bit of a story. It looked like it was bleak, and then suddenly the clouds parted and revealed the most amazing skies imaginable. I did one in Toronto during the big ice storm. No one was out and just had these incredible frozen landscapes. One of my favorite time lapses was in Death Valley. It was freezing cold, there was nobody there. Felt like you were in Mars, but when the sky parted and the stars came out, it was like nothing I've ever seen before. I really just try to take risks with the time lapses and, and do crazy, sh sorry, do crazy stuff because there's nothing to lose. In this story, the moon plays a starring role. Even the slightest little bit of light will blow things out in a big way. So if you imagine a full moon up in the sky when you're trying to shoot stars, it's pretty much like shooting when the sun's out. And tonight, we're in luck. It's a black supermoon seen only about once a year when a new moon reaches its closest point to Earth. There will be zero moon interference whatsoever, so that should allow us to see more stuff in the galaxy than we would on any other day. That's kind of one of the most exciting parts of the process. A lot of times you find something you didn't even know you were going to find, like a huge meteor strike. You have no idea, because even if you're looking up all night, there's just so many things that can happen that are outside your particular view. 
The view tonight is stunning. Okay, so this is the last sunset shot here. Uh, it's uh, very exciting. You can see this pink magic hour behind us. It's fading. So now we just wait for the sun to go down and the stars to come out. And here is the spectacular result, the newest addition to Gavin Star Trail's project. As soon as the stars start to show up in the sky and everything starts to, to reveal itself to you, it immediately kind of tends to put things in perspective. There are a million locations out there to be discovered. His work is truly mesmerizing. It really is. And it's all that little handheld thing. I love it. So Gavin's now working on a project called Sky Glow, and he's going to travel to some of the most exotic dark sky locations in all of North America to look at the impact of light pollution on the people who live there and also on the animals. Time now to shed some light on a few discoveries making headlines.